They're not all camera-clicking tourists, the people who arrive by bus in Darwin from down south. Some of them are potential top-enders, people who hope to stake a claim in the rapidly developing top end of Australia's Northern Territory. Some head for the big mining projects or general industry. Others are moving onto the land. Neil Selleck, farmer from Victoria, is one of these. He'll probably spend a few days in Darwin getting the feel of the place and letting people know he's after a job. The pub's as good a place as anywhere to start looking for work. Neil is really looking for a job with a large-scale land development corporation, a place with plenty of big machinery. Jackie Hargraves is a Territorian from way back. She runs her own farm on the Daly River. Right now, she's paying her last visit to Darwin before the wet sets in. Brian Murphy is a general contractor in Catherine. He came to the Territory several years ago from the Kimberleys. Catherine is about 250 miles south of Darwin, an important cattle centre. Grant Dempsey is a more recent arrival in Catherine. When he and his family came here from Queensland four years ago, June thought this was the end of the earth. But she's got a good house now, and she and the kids are rapidly becoming top-enders. Grant is manager of a pasture and experimental farm attached to Catherine's large meatworks. It's not usual for a woman to run her own farm up north, but apart from that, Jackie is typical of the old-time breed of top-enders. Independent, self-reliant, a battler. She reckons they're all battlers on the daily. Small farmers in a big land, battling to make a go of things, battling to make a quid. Most of the farmers on the daily grow Townsville Lucen, grow it for seed to sell to the pasturists for improved pastures. They plant about December, the beginning of the wet. Then they rely on 24 to 25 inches of rain to kick it along. The top end is dominated by two seasons, the wet and the dry. Towards the end of the dry, the humidity climbs until the atmosphere is almost liquid, and everyone waits for the monsoonal front to roll in from the north. invades the catchment areas of the Daly, Roper, Catherine and Adelaide rivers. Over thousands of square miles, the billabongs fill and overflow. Creeks, long dry, rise with frightening speed. Then you're stuck. You can't move in or out. 
But the daily residents don't care. It gives them a bit of peace and quiet from the tourists. The only way Jackie can get to her farm then is by boat. And she reckons it's all right being a sailor as well as a farmer for a few months. Battling a 12 knot current, dodging the logs and the debris. But she's glad to get back to her wheels by the end of the wet. But Jackie is not sure about her future and the future of the small farmers on the daily. She thinks that people with larger holdings, with more money and resources for experiment, may ease the battlers out. Brian Murphy gave up droving when he had a couple of nippers growing up and bought about 200 acres along the Catherine River. To get money for improvements, he does general contract work around Catherine. He still does a bit of horsework to keep his hand in, to remind him of the days when he was a stockman, when he trapped brumbies and had his own droving plant. Brian and Ruth are, as they put it, a unit unto themselves. They work for themselves and are happy doing it. They like the territory because it's simple and uncomplicated, uncluttered. They hope to live there all their lives. Brian thinks there's more future here for the individual than the big company. He reckons there is certainly potential here. Not only on the land, but practically anywhere for a bloke who's prepared to work and do a fair job of the work he's doing. Ruth's only complaint is that Brian works too hard. Since he became manager of the North Meat Pasture Farm, Grant Dempsey has got a piggery going, which he designed and built himself. The piggery is based on intensive lines, and he hopes soon to raise production from 2,000 to 4,000 porkers a year, sufficient to supply much of the Territory's needs. This rapid doubling of output is typical of the Territory today. Another of the projects Grant is managing on the farm is the breeding of Brahmin crossbulls for sale throughout the territory. He 
He hopes this type of bull will upgrade the whole top-end cattle industry. After five years, this farm is paying for itself. Its success, Grant reckons, is because the company has sufficient money to develop it exactly as they wanted. Big money like North Meat represents is a steadying force, offering security to the hard worker. Grant moved from Queensland to the Northern Territory looking for cheap land. He thinks there is no cheaper country available in Australia than in the top end. Already he's bought a farm on the Catherine, which he hopes to develop gradually while still managing the company farm. Eventually he hopes to run his own farm on the same intensive scientific lines. And the newcomer to the territory from Victoria, Neil Selleck. He's never worked so hard in all his life. He's joined a large corporation that's introducing mass production methods to agriculture in the top end. Massive machines and human sweat, 24 hours a day, rushing to beat the wet, sowing the seed, spreading the fertilizer. A huge effort aiming eventually for a huge yield. With irrigation, two yields a year. These new top enders are taking part in a massive agricultural experiment, a scientific and calculated gamble on a grand scale, because this kind of production has not been tried in the top end before. But right now, they've got no grandiose thoughts about that. Right now, they're thinking about other things, about the beer that keeps one going at the end of the day, in the hot, hard, top end of Australia. <laughs> 